Hi there. Okay, so I have been getting very into the Kibbe and Kirchner um, essence and body typing systems and trying to figure out what my blend of essences might be so that I can look at my existing wardrobe and find the, um, not necessarily do a bunch of shopping, but just find new combinations of things based on what I'm trying to communicate. And I have been watching this amazing YouTube channel, uh, Gabrielle Aruda, I think is how you say her name. And she has a series of, each one is an hour long, so they're very, very deep dive on each of the different Kirchner um, essences. Now, I have always known that I'm interested in and suited for a classic kind of essence, but it's interesting to find, I, I love the way that she presents her information um, and kind of talks about the blend and everything. And so I was most recently watching the romantic one. She was talking about um, what is it that you are wanting to communicate with your, with your um, essence? Like what are the things that you want people to be struck with immediately upon meeting you? Like what do you want them to take away? from from first impressions, things like that. As I got to thinking, I, all the things that I could think of lined up with <laughs> Miss Fisher, and I have always loved um, Phryne's outfits and style and everything from Miss Fisher's murder mysteries, um, but I could never figure out how to incorporate the 1920s look into my lifestyle, because something as flowy as and, and as period looking as Miss Fisher is is too costumey for the office but something that formal is also too um too polished for rehearsal and for social settings so like the costumes for the show themselves don't fit anywhere in my life but as I was watching one of Gabrielle's videos and and hearing these things and identifying with um with these ideas, I thought I'm going to go through my Miss Fisher board on Pinterest and um, write down all of these things that she's talking about in regards to Miss Fisher's essence traits. So I'm going to first show you this list and then I'm going to, we're going to hop over to Pinterest and I'm going to show you pictures of what I mean. So Miss Fisher often has a really great vertical. Like look at this. It's so elongated, it's all within the same, like it's all white or, or very close off-white. Um, she often achieves kind of uh, these vertical pictures um, like this. It's all very streamlined and it's very tall, even though she's not necessarily like super, super tall. She has, she succeeds the most when she has these verticals. Now, because this is the late 1920s and Franny is kind of more on the cutting edge of fashion, she her, her fashion throughout the series, even though it's taking place in the 20s, is very bordering on 30s. In fact, I think it's kind of mostly gives 30s vibes because many things are cut on the bias for her. And so um, you have kind of this loose drapey fit to a lot of her more successful looks, but it definitely also is not boxy. It really does show off everything. So we have this flowy sense of movement and drapiness, but it's not ruffles. It's not um, super long drapiness, and it's not kind of like big twirl, kind of giving princess energy. Um, so let's see, here's a good example of some movement towards the bottom of this kind of cylinder of her silhouette. Uh, here's another one. Um, a lot of the drama and the drape is near the bottom of the dress. This one also, I mean, it's a lot of like structure near her shoulders and then a lot of movement at the bottom. So um, where's the picture that I had? Here's a good example of that bias drape. So everything is very much close to the body, um, but not because it is tightly tailored or necessarily, obviously there's no like stretch fabrics back in this time. Um, I, I think this is just absolutely the most glorious example because you do see a bit of her, her outline here. Um, it is very close fitted, but it's not necessarily tailored 
or uh, or structured to be that kind of close fittedness. And you do see more um, closeness in her shoulders and with the tops of her sleeves. Now the bottom of her sleeves are a little bit pagoda-esque and large, but a lot of the like swoopy, drapey drama is happening at the bottom. So that's um, uh, something that I kind of mention further down here is that it's very tailored around the shoulders and sleeves. It's moderate, moderately fitted, but still supple around the waist. And then it's drapey, drapey and very flowy at the bottom of the kind of cylinder of her silhouette. Now, Miss Fisher is a winter skin tone like I am. And so her coloring, um, both in her like hair to her skin kind of ratio and the makeup she chooses and all the colors that she chooses to wear are very high contrast and that suits her super, super well. Um, just absolutely stunning and makes her glow that high contrast kind of color. Um, let's see, her personality and her movement are highly, highly romantic. This kind of like highly confident, like sexually confident kind of um, vibe. Every room she walks into, she's comfortable. And of course, the beautiful thing about this, the way that the TV series tells her story is that you do see a very well-rounded character with a lot of story arc and a lot of, um, you know, she has moments when she's not confident. She has moments where she's, um, where she's, uh, you know, she's doubting herself or she's struggling to contain her emotions. And I think that is absolutely beautiful the way it's told because nobody is one thing all the time. And I absolutely love that. But, but when she is feeling her most confident, um, she's wearing things that echo, these ideas of, of boldness and of sensuality. So um, everything from the way she sits in casual situations uh, to her, you know, her open kind of confident stance when she's, when she's not, you know, feeling b badly um, is, is very much highly uh, romantic. Now, I think um, here's something that's a little bit kind of hard to get on board with, but I think it's still very true. Um, small prints do look busy on her while larger prints kind of echo her sweeping gracefulness. So it's hard for me to be critical of this because this is one of my favorite outfits in the whole entire show. I think it's so captivating, but this kind of small geometric print does not look as good on her or it doesn't make her glow quite as much as something like this does. This is simpler. It doesn't attract attention away from her face. Um, this, we've already talked about this a little bit in terms of the, the structure versus the movement, but I think something that's really striking about this is you don't notice her face first. You notice the busyness on her duster um, and her face by comparison it, it looks a little muddy. So when we have these really busy prints, it does detract uh, attention away from her face. Uh, you can see this here too. There's a lot of busyness with those giant cuffs and the giant collar. Um, and it's not quite as striking as something like this, which is extremely simple. Um, but it really puts the attention on her face and her natural features. Now, when it comes to prints, she can pull them off, but it looks absolutely stunning when they are larger prints and they are farther from her face. So something like this is absolutely, really does her justice, as does, let's find another, okay, here's another good example of what is not doing her justice because it's very busy, it's not highlighting her shape, and it's detracting attention from her face. Um, oh, this is a great example. Um, this is way too busy. I know <laughs> the whole point of this episode is this is that this dress is absolutely avant-garde, stunning, and, and Inspector Robinson says maybe another night in a less dangerous dress. I have never liked this dress. It is a very poor color on her. Oranges are absolutely no-go on winter skin tones. Um, but I also hate the shoulder thing because I think it's way too geometric for her. It's throwing her way out of balance and it's not, 
it's not putting um, focus where it needs to be. So like, look at this. This is a very big floral print, um, but it is, it's really suiting her kind of romantic nature. And when you see her in lacy things like this, obviously this isn't her, but this is a costume from the show. I don't know if I have a picture of that one on here or not, but um, you know, big romantic elements, even if they are, um, even if they capture the attention, they, they, it works better when it's not super busy. Dark lace looks really great on her, which according to Gabriella Ruda, um, is a hallmark of, let me find one where she's, here it is. Okay. So dark laces like this, especially with large floral prints look amazing on her, which is a hallmark of the romantic essence. Um, but anything geometric uh, looks pretty messy, which indicates to me that she really doesn't have any gamine in her in her uh, blend. Um, when she does preppy, preppy, I think this looks very childish on her. It does not suit her at all. You're not seeing any of her natural curves, any of the kind of... Um, sensuality that she has in her personality and comes across in every single episode for the whole series. Like nothing about this says sensual um, in my mind. It's really kind of doing her a disservice. And I think that that is kind of part of the point that when she's, this is like the first episode. And so when she starts the series, it's not like she has this style evolution, but she does have a character arc through her own personal growth and journey and this kind of reflects, it, you know, it's it's highly in style at the time. Like that silhouette is absolutely like textbook 1920s. But as she moves away from her kind of revenge plot to I'm going to help others and I'm afraid and now I'm brave, like all the things that she grows in personality wise throughout the series, you see her wearing way less of this like traditional 1920s look that does not suit her and wearing more of the um the things that really do suit her so um she does have a very like traditionally dramatic haircut um and I think that that kind of she has more dramatic features in her face and so that complements that and she's able to balance her personality with the way she dresses um, while her, her haircut is kind of, kind of balancing out her, her face. Um, another thing that I think is really interesting is that loud and busy hat decor. She is of course known for her hats, um, but the really loud, busy, okay, so like this hat, it's very simple, right? And, uh, let's see. Where's the other, the plain red one? This hat is very simple. It works really well. This hat is very simple. It works really well. When she has, oh, here's another simple one, just absolutely stunning. When she has any kind of hat that is huge, I think this does not work super well with her face. The only reason she's kind of getting away with it is that it's the same color as her hair. And so there is that. But I don't think that this does her as much justice as like this, that is a lot of very busy hat detail, but it's separated from her face by a very wide brim. Ditto here. We have some of the, um, the duster fabric is up there and kind of a, like, but it's on the outside of a very wide brim. This is another example of that. It's a great big dramatic looking feather, um, but you have a wide brim. And so we're keeping the very busy hat details away from her face. Another reason why I hate this so much, because that great big honking flower thing on her head has no separation from her face, and it really takes attention away from her natural beauty. Big crazy hat detail, big brim to keep it separated from her face. Big crazy hat detail, a uh, slightly smaller brim, and that, along with the collar and cuffs, is very much overwhelming her and making her look a little bit muddy. This is obviously, like, one of the most beautiful things that she wears, and it's so streamlined, and of course it's very romantic, very flowy, but the things that are, like, kind of the busiest and the messiest are separated from her face. Two more things that I really don't 
think work for her. Um, this kimono here, it's very busy. It's very close to her face. It's not separated. And I think this does not look good on her. And that's the really challenging thing about starting to think this way is that like, you have to figure out, I mean, obviously she looks good in everything. There's not a moment when she doesn't look and feel completely polished, but comparing certain things to others, like this is not doing it in the same way that this is. And can you see that difference that this is just more captivating because it's more simple and it lets her own features shine through. Similarly, like, I love this. I think this design is absolutely stunning, but we're getting more of the design than we're getting of her. As opposed to this, it's extremely simple, but her natural beauty really, really shines through. So that's when I say, you know, like certain things aren't working on her. It's not that she looks bad. She always looks good. And that's the whole point of Miss Fisher. But things that are, um, you know, more, less, less busy tend to throw more attention onto Essie Davis, onto Phryne. And so um, the other thing that I think this is a really interesting example is that there are some things that just outright don't work for her at all. This scene is a flashback to, you know, when she's in her younger years we can see that these things don't suit Phryne at all. The the messy romantic hair, it just does not work. It makes her look um it makes her look very unpolished and unput together. Um the the uh kind of segmentation between her bodice and the rest which we can't really see. It's it does not work for her. The huge natural looking wide brimmed hat like this look is not intended to work for her because it's a flashback to an earlier time, um, maybe before she figures out what she's communicating with her clothes. But it, it just really, really doesn't work for her. Um, but, but then, you know, something like this, even though it is busy, it's pretty, um, again, it follows that pattern of like structured in the shoulders. And then I think it's a little bit more voluminous on the bottom, but this really plays up the dramatic with her hair and her makeup and kind of the the um, structure and everything it plays up the romantic with the deep red color um, and elongating her neck is kind of part of the vertical there so some things really really work uh, to showcase her natural beauty and other things kind of um, you know they they take the attention the outfit itself like this is a good example like this the outfit itself is commanding all of the attention and it's not necessarily her face. Um, but that's because this is so much more sporty, kind of gamine, natural kind of look, which does not suit her as well as other things do. Um, but something like this is, you know, very sexual and very romantic. Um, even though it does have those kind of long vertical lines, uh, this suits her character her personality a lot more so because of all of this I would classify Miss Franny Fisher as a predominantly romantic um, with a little bit of dramatic and a little bit of classic but primarily romantic um, I think she definitely does not have any of the natural essence she does not have any of the gamine essence um, and I definitely would n not, not even a little bit of ingenue, even though her eyes are very large, um, her, her energy, her mannerisms, her movement, everything about that is so like mature in a romantic, you know, the, the mature side of romantic. And so I would say she's very much maybe like, like 60 or 70% rom let's say, let's say 60% romantic. And then maybe the remaining 40 is split 2020 with dramatic and classic. For me, I think romantic, classic, and dramatic are my three essences. My blend is probably more on the 60% classic with 50-50 romantic and dramatic, but, but knowing how those various things can be played with and achieved means that I can kind of take the ideas that Miss Fisher is getting across and kind of manipulate them for a modern wardrobe that suits my lifestyle. So anyway, that's my thoughts on that. <laughs>